Italy to 1850, the Medici family. Surprisingly, Italy had never been united prior to 1850. The Italian peninsula had been divided into city-states from the Middle Ages. In 1850, Italian land was redistributed to the Congress of Vienna. Austria took the wealthy regions of Lombardy and Venetia. Central Italy and Rome were ruled by the papacy, and the Bourbons remained in control of Sicily and Naples. Next, we have Mazzini. His idea was a democratic republic based on the universal male suffrage and the will of the people. Then there is Vincenzo Gioberti, who desired for Italy to become a federation under a presidential pope. Sardini was viewed by the middle class as progressive, liberal, and easily unified. The pope opposed the unification of Italy, as well as any new trends. This also included rationalism, socialism, church and state separation, and modernization. Italy was not united. Then came the red shirts. They took over Palermo and headed towards Naples, but Cavour stopped them. There was a plebiscite to unite Italy, and the red shirts accepted. Now Italy is united. So Cavour abandoned by Napoleon III. Uh, has to resign, you know, due to lack of support, but the central part of Italy rallies behind him, and he's able to, you know, rise up and be a hero. To gain support and uh, pay off Napoleon III, he offers Nice and Savory. They hold a vote, and now Italy, the top portion plus part of the central part, are not united. Cavour then keeps an eye on Garibaldi. Here he sees he has some uses, but at the same time he has to be controlled. So, in an attempt to possibly get rid of him, slash, gain more land, he offers them some soldiers. So, Garibaldi, with a thousand red shirts, goes to tackle the rest of Italy. The results are kind of shocking, as he actually does surprisingly well. He's like, he tackles most of Italy, and no one seems to be able to stop him, except when he gets to Rome. As he starts progressing to Rome, Cavour doesn't want to start a fight with the papacy, because he knows Napoleon III will then have to invade. So, so, in an attempt to stop that, he crowds all the Roman lands, all the lands around Rome, with soldiers. So, he evades that, continues down, down past Naples, continues capturing a lot of the land. Cavour was able to use Garibaldi to his advantage and, uh, you know, control him, keep him on a leash to say. So, he didn't overpower him, but he was able to help unite Italy. So, Entering 1871, almost all of Italy was united under a, under a great sense of nationalism, Risorgimento. Before the unification of Italy that started in 1859, the Kingdom of Sardinia consisted of the two territories in red. Sardinia was led by the statesman Count Cavio Camo Cavour, from 1850 until 1861. Cavour was well off because of his noble birth and from his business dealings before his political career. Support for Sardinia was increased in northern Italy because of Cavour's programs of highways and railroads and because of his opposition to clerical privilege. Even with Northern Italy on his side, he knew he would need a powerful ally to drive Austria out of Lombardy and Venetia and unify Northern Italy. 
Cavour and Napoleon III created a secret alliance against Austria. Austria attacked Sardinia in 1859, and Napoleon III in France came to Sardinia's aid. But after the Franco-Sardinian victory in 1859, Napoleon abandoned Cavour. Instead, Napoleon III made a compromise peace with the Austrians at Villafranca in July 1859. They decided that Sardinia would receive only Lombardy, and the rest of the map of Italy would virtually stay the same. Cavour was absolutely furious, and he resigned in a rage. <laughs>